In this lesson, we're going to talk about variables. A variable is just a simple place for a computer to store some information. But before we get there, let's go ahead and use uh, the draw.txt statement so that we can start drawing some text on our screen. In the last lesson, we concentrated primarily on circles. Here, let's go ahead and draw some words or some uh, strings on the screen. I'll go ahead and type in draw.txt, hello. And we'll put that at 2040. We'll go ahead and give it a color too. So now you can see here we've got hello that's drawn at 2040, which is about right here with the bottom left corner of hello, and it's drawing that string. Now, draw.txt gives you a few different parameters. The first is the string or the text that you want to draw. Then you get your x coordinate, then you get your y coordinate, and then you get the color that you want to draw your text in. So, draw.txt allows us to write text on the screen, you know, in addition to the circles that we've drawn before. If we want to just go ahead and identify where that's being drawn. If we draw dot circle 2040, you can see that's coming up right about there. Let's go ahead and make that a much smaller circle. And you can see that that's about where our text is being drawn. So the bottom left corner, that's drawing our text. Now, we can actually use variables to draw our text. So what a variable is, as I said before, it's just a simple place to store some information in your computer program. So if we want to say VAR, which is a keyword that allows us to say we're going to create a variable here. Now, we're going to create a variable's name. We're going to call this variable text. We can call our variable anything we like, but it has to start with an underscore character, which is uh, right beside your zero. If you hold shift in that key right beside your zero that has two lines on it, that's going to give you an underscore. So you can start a variable with uh, an underscore. You can also start a variable with a letter. You can have letters, numbers, or underscores within your variable. Uh, so the variable name is important because if we had a space in it, then that would actually be two separate uh, keywords are two separate words that the that your JavaScript uh, would try to understand. So right now we're going to call it var text and we're going to say this is a string. So now we've created a variable and we've made this variable a string. So strings are just some type of text. We start them with a single quote or a double quote and we end them with a single quote or a double quote. Now we have to start and end them with the same thing. If I start with this with a single quote, you'll see all of this that I'm still typing is still part of the string until I get to the very end here with the double quote. But we typically use single quotes or double quotes exclusively. Now, uh, the re one of the reasons this is nice is if, uh, if I had to put in an apostrophe, you know, this isn't a string. You'll see now all of this is giving me an error because this now is not part of my string anymore. So I could use double quotes to very easily change this to a string that is okay because now this is actually ignored because JavaScript is looking for a string that starts and ends with a double quote because I started it with the double quote. So now if I said, let's go ahead and change this back to this is a string. Now my variable is, I've got a variable called text out there and that variable is just holding this value. So now I could use draw.text and I can just pass in that variable text. Instead of saying hello or some other string, I can use that and I can we'll go ahead and make this black and we'll put it a little bit below our previous string. So you can see here draw.text is just going to draw my text and I can put that at coordinate 2080 and I can make that black. So this gives me a pretty good uh, ability to create basic uh, values and then use them over and over again. I could draw this again if I wanted. Draw.txt, and we'll go ahead and put this on the next line. Draw.txt, text, text, we'll say this time we'll put it at 180 and we'll make this one gray. So now you can see they're drawn over top of each other. This is actually pretty interesting because in uh, the, in coding with Chrome, when you draw using this uh, simple lib or simple statement, you actually draw right on top of anything else you drew on. So if we go ahead and make this a little bit further over, say 250, change our x coordinate, we'll shift that over. And you can see here, I'm just using the same exact variable over and over again. And I could you know make this another one. I could keep using this over and over again. Now, it's not just, you know, variables aren't just used for holding one thing and then never changing again. We can actually manipulate our variables as well. We can actually reset our variables too. So we can say text is equal to, this is the first part of a string. And then we can actually join that with another string called this is the second. So what we're actually doing here is called concatenation. So just like you might add two numbers together, you can add two strings together, which gives you a concatenation or one string together. So when I draw this, you'll notice that this part, this highlighted part with the plus sign and the, the single quotes will not be part of my output. So if I type draw.txt, or say 
text 20, 120. We'll make this one blue. Now you can see I get this is the first part of a string, this is the second. So this actually causes me to join the string together. Now I could actually, I can have lots of white space in between my plus sign and my strings. I can put an enter key. So in, when you're programming white space is spaces, it's tabs, it's end lines, you know, enter keys, um, anything like that. So none of that actually matters. That's all ignored by JavaScript. Uh, now typically programmers will put a space between equal signs. They'll put a space between your plus signs just to keep your code more readable. But JavaScript doesn't care. JavaScript will actually take it anyway. Way. It'll take any of the white space that you have in between. So draw.text will draw this concatenated string together. Now we don't just work with text and strings when we're building variables. We can also use numbers. If I use uh, var number equals one, I'm actually creating a variable called number now and I'm putting the value one into it. And I can draw that just the same as I might with text. Draw text number 2160. We'll go ahead and make this one green. And you can see here now I'm drawing a green number one. Now, our variable names can be anything. It's better if they're representative of the value that they're holding or what they're used for. But we typically want to name them something that, or that makes sense to the programmer. We're not required to do that. Our variable could just be called simply A or B or C. Uh, but generally, that makes it a little bit harder to understand what's going on in your program. So we tend to make more complicated variable names using camel casing. Camel casing just means that I start with a lowercase letter, but then when I come up against another word, instead of using a space or an underscore, I just capitalize that letter, that first letter of the word. So now I can have other number, and we'll go ahead and set other number equals to t equals two. And we can actually use variables to make calculations as well. So I could say var third number is equal to number plus other number. Now I can actually draw that next number. I can say draw text third number 20. We'll move this one down a little bit more and we'll call this one gray. Here we go. So now you can see we have three, which if you've been following, one plus two number plus other number equals three. So third number now contains the value three. So that's actually important because we're going to use a variable a lot when we're cal making calculations in our data. We can also concatenate numbers with strings. So I can say text, we'll use our text variable from before, and we'll set that equal to number, we'll just write out what we just did, plus other number is third number. And JavaScript knows to take all of these numbers and strings and put them all together. So if I type draw text, we'll say text 20, 240, brown this time. Now you can see 1 plus 2 is 3. So it's actually writing out 1 and then adding in the text or concatenating the text plus, then 2, and then concatenating the text is, and then 3 which is what is in third number right now. So you can use these to actually build strings and kind of create user-friendly output here. You can actually also use calculations right in your concatenation. So I could say something like var more text, we'll go ahead and get that right, var more text is equal to eight times three is eight times three. Now, we don't have a, a multiplication sign like an X, like you might have uh, if you're just writing it out on paper. We tend to use the asterisk for multiplication when we're doing that in a program. So eight times three, right here, eight times three is actually gonna be 24. And if we draw that out, draw text, more text, 20 to 80, we'll make this red this time you can see here that we're going to see 8 times 3 is 24. So we can actually do that, ca that calculation right in the concatenation. Now when we're doing arithmetic in JavaScript, we usually follow, or the program will follow the order of operations. So multiplication is going to happen first before it tries to concatenate in, uh, with the string. But we also have this in parentheses, so that will also cause it to happen before the rest of the statement. Now we can actually uh, we can do division, we can do all sorts of different things. You know, we can use division, so we'll say even more text is equal to nine divided by two is, and we'll go ahead and do nine. We don't have a division symbol either. We use the forward slash, which is the one that is on your question mark key on your keyboard. And we'll go ahead and draw that. Draw text 
even more text. We'll go ahead and put this at 20 and say we'll add 40 more to space this down a little bit more and we'll make this text orange. So now you can see 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. So we're actually able to keep adding more and more text here. And we're able to put division or multiplication or other calculations right into our strings. So we can actually use our variables uh, over and over again so that we can, uh, we can reuse the same variable. One of the things that I can do, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of enter keys in here so we can see this a little closer to the center. I'm going to say var x is equal to 0. I can set x equal to x plus 1. Now if you've done algebra you understand that this actually doesn't look right. x can't be equal to x plus 1. But we're not actually saying x is equal to x plus 1. We're saying set x equal to x plus 1. So now x has the value of 1 and now we can prove that by saying draw text x 20. We'll go ahead and say 360 uh, and we will put in say purple. So now you can see x is the value 1 here. Uh, we can actually use some shorthands too. So we can use, you know, if we wanted to say x is equal to x plus 5 we could do that. Or we could just say as a programmer x plus equals 5 which has the same effect. So if we want to see this, if we add x to or 5 to x, we should see that x is now 6. And if we want to just prove it, we can draw x, and we can go ahead and we'll put that at 400, and we'll call this, we'll just go back to black here. And you can see here, it's 6. So x plus equals 5 equals 6, which is putting our text right out on the screen. Uh, we can also use something called plus plus, and this is something that you'll see a lot in programming x plus plus which basically means set x equal to x plus one so x plus equal one all three of these statements x plus plus x is equal to x plus one and x plus equals one pretty much work exactly the same way they all add one to x so if we do x plus plus and then we draw our text x and then we say 20 let's go 440 this time and we'll do magenta can see our number 7 in the magenta color over here. And it also works for minus minus. If we use x minus minus, draw text x 20 for 80, and we can use this time, we'll go back to black again. You can see that's taking us back to 6. So all of these are just ways to manipulate our variables. We can create strings, we can connect, concatenate strings using the plus sign, we can multiply, we can divide, we can add and subtract. Uh, we can do all of these different things with variables and variables allow us to keep track of this information so as we actually make calculations we're able to do interesting and useful things. So in this lesson we talked a bit about variables, we introduced draw.text so we could show some text on the screen, and uh, hopefully this will give us a good foundation for our next lessons where we'll learn about if then else and some loops. Thanks for watching today and remember to practice your coding.